These are all examples of Cubaris murina, a small but appealing isopod. Hi, Russ of Aquarimax Pets here, and today's video is a species profile of Cubaris murina, or Cubaris marina, if you prefer. This is a widespread species found in North and South America, Africa, many parts of Asia, Australia. In short, there are many places around the world, subtropical and tropical areas, where you can find this species. Let's look into the name of this species. The etymology of the word cubaris has been a bit hard to track down. It may be related to a Latin word meaning to recline or sleep, and it may not. The word murina means mouse in Latin, and this may be a reference to the size of this species, which is only slightly over a centimeter long. The word murina has nothing to do with the ocean, but the fact that it looks a lot like the word marine is probably why the common name of the wild type is little sea. Then again, this species is often found in coastal areas, so the reference to the sea is appropriate in that sense. Like all Cubaris species, and many other isopods, this isopod can conglobate. There are a few different morphs of Cubaris marina. The wild type is mostly a gray color, but its uropods look like little orange tail lights. My stock of wild types came from David Ferelli and Sparrow. Cubaris marina papaya, isolated by Smugbug, is one of the few isopods that actually looks pink. Mine were sent to me, again, by David Ferelli and Sparrow. Cubaris marina glacier is completely white, even the eyes, much like Porcelionides prunosus whiteout. Any coloration you see in this morph is likely to be due to its translucence, so you're actually seeing what's inside the isopod, or perhaps coloration taken in from food sources like carotenoids, something like that, rather than color that is intrinsic to the isopod itself. From what I understand, this morph descends from white specimens that were collected in the wild rather than found in a captive colony. David Farelli and Sparrow were the sources of these beauties too. My personal favorite morph of this species, at least so far, is Cubaris marina anemone. These came from Easy Eddie quite recently. They vary quite a bit from one individual to another. Some are solid orange, while others feature an orange background color mottled with the wild type gray. A little bit like Porcelio scaber lava. There are other morphs of Cubaris marina out there, but these are the only ones that I have. This species is on the prolific side for Cubaris. I found an article, and I'll link to it down in the description, that investigated the reproductive biology of Cubaris marina, which states that the average brood size of this species was 25. In a moment, we'll talk about care for Cubaris marina, but first, I'd like to give a shout out to my patrons. Patreon.com is one of the best ways that you can help content creators like me continue to produce content that you appreciate. So, if you like watching my videos, Patreon is an excellent way of ensuring that I can continue to make them. And in return, I can acknowledge your contribution with your name in the video, as you will see at the end of this one. I also give you the option to submit questions in advance of a live stream so I can make sure to answer them. To become an Aquarimax Pets patron, search for Aquarimax Pets on patreon.com or just click on the link at the end of this video or in the description. Now, let's talk about care for Cubaris marina. You can start with a pretty small enclosure for this species, a six quart bin or even smaller than that, since these isopods don't get very big. Just keep in mind that you'll need to split the culture or upgrade as the colony grows. Cubaris marina seem to like their substrate mostly on the damp side, never soggy, and I still do provide a moisture gradient for mine, but it wouldn't hurt if more than 50% of the enclosure is a little moist. Provide at least an inch of base substrate for these isopods. And of course, you have the option to go deeper with your substrate if you like, which generally increases the interval between waterings. It's always best to offer plentiful leaf litter and hides, and this species really seems to utilize most of the available space. I have my Cubaris marina in enclosures with moderate ventilation, and as always, keep in mind that ambient humidity and airflow will influence the exact ventilation and watering regimen that you will need to provide. This species seems to thrive at normal room temperatures. They get the same basic foods that I provide to almost all of my isopods. Goes without saying that they have access to decomposing leaf litter. Supreme isopod chow is a frequent food item, and I supplement 
that with fish food pellets and plant-based foods such as green beans, raw sweet potato, various squashes, etc. I haven't kept this species in a cleanup crew, but I hear that a lot of people have used them that way. Smugbug.com indicates that they will eat soft plants, but are safe with reptiles and amphibians, so as long as you use tougher plants, or are not concerned if the plants get some nibbles, this may be a species worth considering in a bioactive cleanup crew. So, what do I think about Cubaris marina as a pet and or display isopod? I think they're a pretty popular isopod with good reason. As I've mentioned, they're not very big, but they do seem to get somewhat active when they're in large numbers, and they come in a fair assortment of colors. They're not expensive, fairly easy to care for, and are readily available. So they have a lot to recommend them as a pet. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Friday with live streams on Wednesdays, all on aquarium and vivarium pets with lots of isopod content. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell for all notifications so you don't miss my next video.